Using social media as a tool to promote your online coaching business is a good idea. In fact, it's a great idea, one in which I constantly talk about and recommend to the viewers of this channel. But, and this is a big but, there are some fundamental rules that you need to follow if you really want this to work for you, rather than just getting lost and frustrated in a sea of social media posts and videos and comments and so on and so on. So in this video, I want to talk about what not to do when you are using social media to promote your online business. But first, as always, thank you for coming back and watching another video. If you are a returning viewer, I really do appreciate it. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Ryan Ford and I teach online coaches and course creators how to scale their sales while working less. So if you are new to the world of online course creation, or even if you are a seasoned course creator and you are looking for a free guide that will help you to break down all of the steps that you need to take in order to both sell and then market your own online course or program successfully, I recommend you download my Digital Creator Startup Guide. It's completely free and packed with information that is perfect for you if you would like to start creating and selling your own digital products online. Now the link for that should be somewhere on the screen if you are interested right now and as always I'll also leave it in the description box down below. Now let's dive into what you should not be doing when you are using social media to promote and generate customers for your course or program. The first thing that I recommend that you avoid is making and releasing content on anywhere other than your own blog or YouTube channel. So Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, and any other places like those. And some people usually get really upset when I say this point, so let me explain why I recommend that you avoid these types of places for creating and releasing your content. When you create content for your audience to consume, you want that content to be searchable. And there are no bigger places on earth to search for and find content than Google or YouTube. Now Google is the biggest and it's the most visited website in the world and this is followed by its younger brother in second place YouTube and Google also own YouTube so they cross reference each other and recommend each other's content sometimes. So in Google you'll sometimes be recommended videos on YouTube and then vice versa YouTube will also sometimes recommend websites to you. Now all of those other social media platforms that I've already mentioned so like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok etc etc those are not search engines they are social media platforms. People do not go onto those platforms searching for answers. They use those platforms to either be nosy and spy on their friends or their followers, or they just want to be entertained with silly throwaway content. So if you're spending your most valuable asset, which is your time, creating helpful content for your ideal audience to consume, you want them to be able to discover that content indefinitely. So as an example, this very video that you're watching now, this will be on YouTube until the day I die and beyond. And it will always be ranking for the keywords that are related to my topic. So online courses, online course creators, and coaching related topics. Meaning that anybody who searches for either this exact video topic or closely related topics, YouTube will indefinitely recommend this video to those people who may be interested in this particular video. That will not happen on the likes of Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat. If you release content on those types of platforms it will be buried underneath a sea of new content inside of your audience's feed or if it's released as a story it vanishes after only 24 hours so unless they see it within the first 24 hours the chances are they're never going to see it and even more importantly new people in the future will never be able to find it because again those places are not search engines they're social media websites whereas your blog or YouTube whichever type of content you prefer to create so it could be videos just like this or it could be written content on your blog those can be discovered forever after a search on Google or YouTube so the first rule for coaches or course creators from me anyway is that I would highly recommend that you either create content for your audience on your blog or start a YouTube channel. Leave all of the other platforms alone or for your personal life only. The second mistake that I want you to avoid is chasing followers or subscribers. So regardless of what platform you use to engage with your audience, even if you ignore my first rule, which is to only use YouTube or your blog, do not chase followers or likers or subscribers. The only thing that you should be chasing is email addresses. Collecting email addresses should be your number one priority. It's not likes, it's not followers, it's not subscribers, 
it's email addresses. Your email list is your most valuable asset as a business owner. And this is such an important topic that so many people either seem to not understand or they don't care about it because it doesn't stroke their ego. I mean, sure, it might make you feel good having hundreds or thousands of followers or likes on a photo or subscribers and they love you and they love your content and you're amazing. But two things to think about for a second. Number one, does that put any money into your bank account? And that's the name of the game, right? I mean, unless you don't care about money and you only create content for retention, then that's absolutely fine and I wish you the best of luck with that. But as an online content creator or entrepreneur, as business owners, the entire purpose is to earn money so that you can be financially independent and spend more of your time doing the things that you love to do in your own life. And having more subscribers or followers doesn't do that for you. Having more email addresses does do that for you. And two, when you have an email list, you own the list. That is a collection of your contacts that you own and nobody can take it away from you. So anytime you want to send an email out to your list, whether it's a new product of yours or it's a new piece of content, you have direct access to them without anybody else in between. But when you have a big following of only followers or subscribers, you don't own that. The platform that you're using owns that. So you could lose your Instagram account or your Facebook account tomorrow. And let's just say, as an example, let's just say you have 10,000 followers. They're all gone. It's time for you to now start all over again. And I wish you the very best of luck with that. But that can't happen if you have 10,000 email addresses because you own the list. Whereas if you only have an audience on platforms like YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, you don't own that audience. The platform does. And they can take that away from you in a heartbeat should they feel like changing the rules. And on top of this, when you create a new piece of content and you release it to your audience using a social media platform like Facebook or Instagram, for example, less than 10% of your actual followers or subscribers will actually see that content. That's because if you want all of your audience to see that post, the platform wants you to pay them for that privilege because again, it's their audience and it's their platform. It's not yours. Whereas with email, you can send an email out and 100% of those emails will be delivered to the recipient. Sure, some of them will end up in the spam folder, but there are things that you can do to decrease that. But even then, the percentage of people who actually see the email and then your content inside of that email, that still blows any social media platform out of the water in comparison. So never chase followers or likers, if that is such a thing, all subscribers, chase email addresses. Collecting email addresses is the smartest thing that you can do as a business owner because not only do you own the list, but email marketing is still the best way for you to generate the most revenue for your business. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you would like a much more thorough and in-depth guide on creating and selling your own online course or coaching program or any digital type of product, you can grab yourself a copy of my digital creator startup guide. The link for that should be somewhere on your screen right now. I hope that you found this video helpful. Hopefully now you'll start to utilize and use those strategies that I've spoken about to increase the revenue that you can generate for your content business. Hopefully I'll see you inside another one of my videos and until next time, take care.